Hello. I want to take some time now at the beginning of the unit to touch on some things uh, so that you have a good understanding of the expectations over the next few weeks. Uh, so uh, I want to briefly touch on uh, discourse, the concept. I'd like to talk about the prompt and the project itself. Uh, I'd like to talk about the schedule and I'd like to introduce a small exercise that folks will be working on this week. And so to start, I want to address uh, the very concept of discourse. Uh, last week I asked you to do a reading uh, and to explain and for the most part people did uh, a really strong job understanding uh, what this concept is all about. Um, for us now, we're really going to think about a couple of things. We're going to be thinking about how communication via language and other symbol systems works. And we're also going to think about the sorts of values, ideologies, and beliefs that underpin the way that people communicate. And so let's think maybe of a really small example. Let's imagine that you're walking through the aisles of Trader Joe's and you're thinking about kind of the, the discourse of healthy eating at Trader Joe's. And so while you're looking at all the packages on the shelf, you start to see a lot of specific language. You see language like, um, non-GMO, you see language like gluten-free, you see language like natural, you see language like organic, you see language like fresh. And so all of this language, uh, these are the patterns that you would start to see, that they often are using language that to an extent tries to connect healthy eating with understanding natural. All right? So there's a pattern. Uh, and maybe you're even looking at some of the visuals and you're seeing the colors they use, the earth tones and the greens, and you see these symbols, right? These pictures of wheat fields and all of this. Well, all of this is part of the discourse that you could examine. And so if you see that there's this pattern of linking healthy eating to natural, you could then get at some of the values and beliefs. So, for example, you would be able to draw a reasonable conclusion that within this discourse, there's this ideology that if something is natural, it is then healthy. Of course, that may not completely be true, but that's this thinking, right, that underpins why they would even use all of this language that they're using. And so that's kind of the way that we'll be looking at uh, discourse in this unit. Uh, now, uh, last week I also asked you to take a look at the prompt, and I want to do two things now. I want to look at the prompt, and I want to give you kind of a cheat sheet for how we'll be working with it. So if you look at the prompt, uh, you can see that I've basically handed people these steps. This is what you need to do for your project. You need to choose a discourse. You then need to look for patterns. You then need to draw reasonable conclusions about the values and the ideologies. You then need to think about all of this with regard to the larger culture, and you need to build an argument about how you can situate your discourse into this larger culture. So that's a lot of stuff that's happening. Uh, however, I will provide a template, and I'm not forcing anyone to use the template, but the template uh, helps everybody see the types of writing I'm looking for in certain sections of the paper and also gives you a good understanding of all the concepts you need to cover. And so there's this document, this cheat sheet that we'll be working from uh, over the next few weeks. And I've given you a way of understanding the overall thesis, right? Because your thesis in this project has three parts. It's about patterns, it's about values and ideologies, and it's about how it connects to our culture. And then I've given you... Um, uh, input on what you should be doing for each concept or for each section. So this is what I'm looking for in the analytical section about patterns. This is what I'm looking for when you're talking about values and ideologies. And this is what I'm looking for when you're talking about or when you're building those larger arguments. So we're going to be working from this document uh, as you guys are putting your project together. And the good news is that when you're putting your project together, I'm not just asking you to go write everything in a single week. Uh, if I can pull up the schedule here for a moment, I want you to see that if you look at the details on the schedule, we're actually drafting for a couple of weeks. And so I'm going to start this week by asking you to 
you know, think about the discourse you want to analyze and start finding some evidence. And then you guys will draft sections that have to do with the patterns and maybe draw some conclusions about values and ideologies. That's another week. And then the following week, I'll ask you to draft the next section of your paper. So we're treating this whole thing as a process. And so I'll be able to see the extent to which you're building strong arguments about patterns, the extent to which you're able to draw reasonable conclusions, uh, the extent to which you're able to build larger cases, and you'll be putting it together as we go. So I hope that that uh, helps out a bit because I know some folks were a little concerned with organization or they weren't quite sure that what they would be doing in this project. Uh, and I imagine after having watched this, you've got a little bit of a better understanding. And so to get started, uh, this week, we're going to do this practice analysis. And so what's going to happen is we're going to build a paper together as a class. And then in building that paper, hopefully you get a strong understanding of what you'll be doing with your individual discourse. And so uh, I invite everybody to take a look at the writing journal seven, because I'm going to invite you guys to look at a specific discourse. And we're thinking here of the discourse of the vitamin and supplement industry, uh, specifically as it comes across to us through the company GNC. And so I'm going to ask you to do uh, very much what I was just uh, explaining when I use that little Trader Joe's example. I want you to click through the website. I want you to look at uh, a variety of places on the website. And I want you to think about the patterns that you may see embedded in how uh, the company communicates with its public. And I want you to think about some of the ideologies and beliefs that may underpin those patterns. So this is practice for what we'll be doing. I will then show you how you would write this up as an analytical paragraph, and then you'll begin doing the analytical writing for your own discourse. So I hope that this gives you a pretty strong indication of what we've got in store over the next couple of weeks. Take care.